What's up guys, it's Instinct here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to do this liquidy milk type of effect with a swirl and some like milk particles everywhere. So unfortunately the Cinema 4D tutorial will require you to have Cinema 4D R21 or higher. I'm going to be using R23 for this tutorial, but as long as it's above R21 it will work. And I'll be giving away the material and the Lightroom and this project file completely for free, so go ahead and check the link in the description for a free download. I'll also include timestamps so you guys know where everything is, and with all that said guys, let's jump right into the video. So what you guys want to do is you guys want to go ahead and click Mo Graph and click Mo Text, and go ahead and name this anything you guys want, so I'm going to be using Milk for this tutorial and go ahead and click the font right here to go ahead and change the font. I'm going to be using Cunia because I've been using that lately and it's a really nice font. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to go ahead and click middle right here where it says align to center this and we're going to change the depth to 80 centimeters. Click 80 and go to caps and where it says round just go ahead and type in 3 and for segments we're going to do 10 like that. Um, I'm gonna go to click ground shading, you guys should already be on ground shading, but I'm gonna go click ground shading if you guys aren't already on it, so you guys can see this. And right down here where it says cap types, we're gonna change this to regular grid, and we're gonna put the size to 5 centimeters, so it will increase the segments on the caps. So from here, go ahead and click object, and go to subdivision, and type in 40, and this will basically make the subdivision on the back or like the rounding uh, 40. So now we have a lot of geometry to work with to make this effect work. And real quick I'm just gonna right click and go to uh, simulation or is it rigging tags and go to protection just so I lock the camera so I don't move it. Okay cool. So from here what we're gonna do is we are going to grab a volume builder. Now this is where R21 and above comes in. Now if you guys are have R20 or below, you guys will not have this, this is why you need R21 or higher. Just go ahead and drag this in like this, it'll make it all like pixelated, and that is perfectly okay, that is what we want. And we're going to change the voxel size to 5 centimeters, like so, actually we're going to go down to 2 centimeters, like so, and add a SDF smooth, this will just kind of smooth and everything out. Um, it's still a little bit pixelated, but that's where the volume mesher comes in to smoothen that out even more so go ahead and hold right here and get the volume mesher and drag the volume builder into the volume mesher and you will instantly see that it is super super smooth. Alright from here what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a displacer so hold down right here get a displacer and put it onto the text like so and go to shading go to shader and go to noise and this will start getting our effects. Now we can go to ground shading to actually start seeing what everything does. Um, so go ahead and click on displacer and we're going to click right here and change the global scale to I think around 300% looks good. This will just kind of make the like the warps and like the, like the little dents and everything kind of like bigger. And go ahead to contrast and this will just kind of like increase it a little bit more. Something like that. And that is basically the liquid effect. And I'm just gonna increase the contrast a little bit more, maybe like 50-ish percent. Now that's a little bit too much, so now what I'm gonna do is go to Object and go to Strength and put this at 5. And that is looking a lot better in my opinion. Maybe bump it up to 6. We can do 6. Render this out, and this is what we have. Now from here we can go ahead and apply our material. This is a material I made, it's pretty basic, but it will do. And just drag it on there and click cubic and seamless and like I said before this material will be free in the description to download and now as we give this a render we get our milk effect and it's looking pretty nice so now what we want to do next is go ahead and get our swirl going here so hold down on the pen tool go to helix and go to coordinates and rotate this 90 degrees like on the P on the RP here and then we can just bring this up like so, and there we go. Now what we want to do is go ahead and get a circle, and scale this down to about like there. It doesn't really matter because we're going to change it later. We can always change it later. Go ahead and hold down on this like box thing. It's an extrude. Go ahead and grab a sweep nerves, 
and put the circle on the helix into the sweep like so. Circle has to be above the helix, otherwise you get this, and that is not what we want. So we want the circle above the helix, and they're both into the sweep nerves. When you're doing this, make sure you go ahead and put it down like that, and it will go in. Alright, so from here, I'm going to go to the circle and go to object, and I'm just going to scale this down a little bit more to maybe like 8. 8 is looking good. And for helix, we're going to go to the start radius, and we're going to put this at like 230-ish is what I had it at before. On the inner, at the start and the end radius, my bad, uh, at 230. And from here, we can go ahead and stretch this out a little bit more. At not that, I meant the height, my bad like this and we get that swirl effect that we had and you guys can just keep tinkering around with this until you guys get way too long. So I think something like this is looking a little bit better. I'm gonna move it up like this and that is looking good but we have some collision on the left and to fix that it's simply just scale it up a little bit like that and boom now we can go back to the move tool move this down and get like a nice sort of position i think that's looking pretty good something like that and there we go move this to render out and yeah it's looking really nice now from here what we're gonna do is go into the swede nerds and basically repeat what we did before uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab a splicer which is right here drag this under the helix actually drag it uh, to the left of the helix and go to shading and go to noise or shader and go to noise and go ahead and click this like we did before and we're gonna put this up like maybe I'm gonna try 500% and I don't remember what I did before but that is looking really nice and I'm gonna increase the contrast like I did before something like that now it's too skinny on some parts so to fix that we're just gonna Decrease the height a little bit. Going to go five, and that is looking good. Also, something you guys can do is change the seed um, in the displacer, like so. And I think this one's looking a little bit better. Uh, however, I'm gonna go to the height and change this to four. That's looking a little bit better. And apply the material like we did before onto the sweet nerves, and click cubic and seamless. Cubic and seamless. I'm going to make sure I did that before, because yes I did, there we go. And now all we have to do is add the uh, explosion effect, and to do that we're going to go ahead and get a sphere, go to display and turn on ground shading so we can see the geometry, put the segments at 50, and from here what we're going to do is go ahead and get a volume builder, put this in the volume builder like so, with the arrow pointing down. Click Volume Builder, go to Voxel Size, and we're going to do 5. This one I experimented with quite a bit. We're not going to add a smooth this time, actually, we might later, we'll see. And we're going to go to Volume Mesher, put this in the Volume Mesher like that, so that it's very smooth. I'm going to actually hide this so it doesn't lag as much, but we're going to get a explosion, which is, where is it, right here. Put it onto the sphere, or under the sphere, make sure it's under the sphere, and just put this at like 10% uh, will do. And turn on the volume measure, and if it's too small, like it is here, you just want to dec or increase the voxel size. So I'm going to try like 8, and there you go. And that will kind of just uh, increase the voxel, like the size of the um, uh, thing. And you can kind of mess around with this. This takes quite a bit of tinkering to get looking good. So I'm going to go with 8 and add a subdivision surface. We could add a smoothing thing, or SDF smooth, but that basically gets rid of it. So I found another way to, to get the smoothing out. It's just to add a subdivision surface, the volume measure in the subdivision surface. And that doesn't really do anything except smoothing it. And from here, we're basically going to click the subdivision surface and scale this up. And you know, that's basically it for the tutorial. Uh, I'm just going to keep scaling this like so. So it kind of looks like it's everywhere. And we can grab the rotation tool and rotate this around. 
to get like a nice something like that. I think it's looking good. There we go. And that is basically it for the tutorial. Once again, we're gonna drag the material on to the subdivision surface and click cubic and seamless. Unhide this backdrop that I already had hidden before and click this button to render it out. And that is basically it for this Cinema 4D tutorial, guys. If you guys like this video, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you guys like this video, there's a good chance that you guys will like some of my others. So go ahead and check out some of my other videos on the screen right now. With all that said, guys, this is Instinct signing out for now. Peace.